Scott Golden Golden Opportunities Coaching and the at PO Perception Twitter account. And today we're going to talk about forming powerful relationships. Forming powerful relationships, I think, is something that ultimately um, almost every person that I work with uh, needs that or is craving that. And how does one um, do that? How does one form positive, powerful relationships? The answer to that is they're focused on equality. Now, what is an equal relationship? An equal relationship is one wherein people can be honest and forthright with their expectations of the other person without assumption or also clearly communicating what is needed. See, the problem for most people is we live by a series of rules. And if a person is living by a series of rules and the assumption is the other person that they're dealing with, the person that they're uh, passionate about or the person they care about, it lives by this lives by rules that aren't in alignment with with their partner then things fall apart and so the challenge becomes how do you express your needs portfolio without feeling like a fool or feeling like a nag and the answer there ultimately becomes it is more important for you to feel like you are clearly defining your expectations of the other person in your life than it is to wonder if you're saying the wrong thing. The biggest problem with communication between couples, and I've worked with thousands of couples all around the world, the biggest problem with those communication styles is the assumption that the other person sees the world in the way that you do. And then the the secondary problem that comes off of that is trying to change the other person to see the world in the way that you do. If you have to try to get someone to change in order to be with you, that means emphatically you have outgrown the relationship being mutually beneficial. Now, until there's growth on both sides that both people agree with and believe in, the relationship will not be solid, strong, or healthy. And that's uncomfortable for a lot of people because most people live in unbalanced relationships. Look at our divorce rates, look at the rates of of, of physical or emotional abuse, look at the number of people who are dissatisfied, the number of affairs. These all speak to those factors, factors that we don't have to have, factors that don't have to be as as prevalent as they are, but they are prevalent only because the individuals engaging in the relationships are trying to use the relationship in one form or another to, to complete an expectation of being loved. That is why it is truly an, a necessity. We're not even talking about a should, we're talking about a must, that one must love themselves in order to be an equal partner and be able to communicate their needs in a clear, concise, direct, and warm manner. Now notice I said clear, concise, direct and warm and sometimes that can be challenging because we think we're being clear and concise and we come off aggressively or we come off harshly or we come off uncomfortably or we come off in a manner that makes the other person feel judged or we're not clear we we make leaps of judgment as it relates to what another person is is thinking or should think or how they might think and here's the thing if you are having a thought, and we all have about somewhere between fifty to eighty thousand of them in a, in a day, depending on 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 how we're how much we're awake, how awake we are, how aware we are, that doesn't mean that the other person you're trying to interact with understands your motivating factor. Matter of fact, most often. We, although we're motivated by our emotions, we don't express these emotions as clearly as and concisely as possible. So an equal partnership means holding nothing back. It also means caring more about the quality of time you're spending with a person than it does the, the quantity of time or how the relationship appears. How many people have you known? How many people have you dealt with? How many people do you know right now who look happy on social media, who look happy when they're together at a party, 
but then behind closed doors, one or both parties are sitting there talking about how they're unfulfilled or they're undersatisfied or nothing's going right in their relationship, and then it leads to affairs, it leads to addictive behaviors, it leads to all these things. See, the realities of what causes relationship breakdowns are really two simple things. One, a relationship breaks down when the corporate focus, meaning the group focus of both parties in the relationship is not the same or similar or does not have common ground. And two, it breaks down when the value score, meaning the things that the other person values, are markedly different from each other. When one or both of these things are at play, the relationship will eventually falter, not because the other person doesn't care, but because there isn't enough of a solid foundation to create a solution based in the relationship. Now, the good news is this. Nearly any, except in extreme circumstances, relationship can be saved but here's the challenge. To save the relationship, both people must be committed to the progress of change, changing their focus, changing the language that they utilize, changing the actions they take, the time, how they use their time, the way in which they relate to each other, the way in which they make time for each other. You know, we all have the same 86,400 seconds in a day. How we use it, though, will directly impact, if not determine, determine the successfulness or lack thereof of the relationships we're in. Remember, people want to feel important, and one of the key ways to make a person feel important is to make sure, without any limitation, that they are a priority or feel like one. And if you don't have time to maintain a romantic relationship or a friendship, you cannot, well you can, but it's, in, it's counterproductive to ultimately expect another person to accept being left behind. Another thing to consider is do not assume that your partner or prospective partner has the same definition of what a relationship is. This is where the use of powerful questions is essential to strong relationship building. For some people, monogamy is a foregone conclusion. For others, Polygamy or swinging is a foregone conclusion. For some people, spending one night a week together is enough. For other people, spending every night together is, is necessary. For some people, we can have independent hobbies. For others, when an independent hobby comes in, it sets off bells and whistles and, and discomfort around not being enough. For some people, money matters. For other people, time matters. You have to be able to understand how to actively ask powerful questions that lead to an understanding of two things, not just the other person, but how, how that other person's needs relate to who you naturally are. Many times people say that a person will change for you if they love you, and that's just not factually accurate. A person will change because they see the value in the change and they're committed to it. Now, the love they have for you is a possible motivating factor, but it alone cannot define whether a person will change uh, ultimately how they, how they behave or handle things. But here's the other part of it. Don't get into the what I call the illusion of competition when it comes to relationships. Just because your friends have one. Just because your friends are getting married. Just because your friends are having children. Just because your friends are, are going on this vacation. Just because they're waiting to, you know, hear from that special guy or a special lady. Don't get into the illusion of competition that because other people are doing it, you should too. Because what's right for you as it relates to the development of powerful relationships could have nothing to do with what your friends, your colleagues, your, your siblings, your best friends, other family members, extended family members believe or do. You have to know within yourself what your standards are and be able to express them in a manner that's non-confrontational, clear and concise. And when you understand how to do that, the quality of your relationships will change sometimes. Matter of fact, many times I've walked clients 
through the process of purging the people in their life that are taking the energy from them and not giving back. And at first it seems painful, but once the purge is complete, in other words, once the relationship that's unhealthy or is draining is, is out of the way, that person goes through a renaissance where they make a whole different group of friends, where they begin to see their own value differently. Holding on to a toxic relationship is the strangulation of of your self-value and your creativity. Understanding that dealing with people who are going in the same direction is a prerequisite to successful living is also imperative because when someone has the same value score that you do, they can also understand what is meaningful to you, what matters to you, and, and where your focus is. Now, it's, it's important for you to begin to understand, yes, you must find the balance between giving people multiple chances to grow as a person. We don't want to dismiss someone too early and also be able to say, you know what, you're not growing at a rate that I can, that I can get behind or tolerate or am comfortable with anymore. You're not growing at a rate that's, that's comfortable for me. And the way to do that, I teach people all the time in my coaching practice, this the three strike rule. The first time someone hurts you, you, you let them know they've hurt you and you and you tell them that you're uncomfortable and you'd like them to, to make alterations to their behavior. The second time they hurt you, you tell them they've hurt you again, but also they've hurt themselves because if it happens a third time, you're out the door. And then the third time you commit to yourself because you understand your own value not to ultimately um, continue in a relationship that's that out of balance. Now, for some people, especially if your family dynamics have taught you, which which family dynamics is, is a, a topic for a different day and another audio, but if your family dynamics have taught you hold on just because, that can be one of the most unhealthy and, and unsatisfying and really strangling uh, situations on the planet because most people fall into the trap of remaining in relationships that don't have anything to do with positive progression for either person. They'll stay in marriages or friendships or uh, family dynamics where it's not healthy for either person because all it is is a tug of war. It's not healthy for either person because all it is is a, is a battle of who's going to win and who's going to lose and who's going to get their way and who's going to not and who's going to finally convince the other person. And that's not a relationship. See, the relationship is two words in one, relation or relate and ship. The guiding of the ship of one's life and the quality of one's life is directly related to the energy placed into relationships in general. And so here's the challenge with that. If you don't see your value, if you don't understand that value, if you don't know how to say, this is, this is who I am, this is where I am, I have to be uniquely me, otherwise I'm going to check out on the quality of this relationship and on my own happiness and, and health and wealth and, and well-being, then there becomes a challenge with that. The challenge that exists is simply, what is it, where is it that I'm trying to get to and go? Where is it that, that you know, ultimately matters to me? And then one looks and says, wait a second, in this moment, I don't ha have the quality of relationships I want. But usually that doesn't happen overnight. That happens when we have tolerated something for so long that we've lost sight of who we truly are, who we desire to become, and what's right for us and what's in our best interest. So it's important to begin to understand that value in a whole new way. Now I encourage each and every one of you, go back into our archives here on the YouTube channel and, and kind of get behind some of that other thinking because as part of a progress tribe, one thing we all need to do is make sure that the quality of our relationships is something we assess regularly, whether that's every, every few months, whether that's every quarter, whether that's twice a year, or at least yearly. Are the people in my life adding to my life or taking away from it? And am I adding to the people in my life or do I take away from them or expect too much from them? When you're in the balance of 
positive, powerful relationships, it is, it is then when your life can be truly fulfilling. Once again, Scott Golden, and I encourage you, if you want to work on this one-on-one, -on -one, please feel free to reach out to our team. The information to do so is in the About Me section also. Still going towards that 100 subscriber drive when we hit there. One month package will be given away $350 value of coaching services. So like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones about these audios. And we're going to make a difference. Thank you for being part of the Progress Tribe.